In 2007, astronomers discovered this really, really cool object that is still known as 2007 OR10. It doesn't really have a name yet, mostly because we don't know enough about it to name it. But it's unofficially known as Snow White, and very recently, in May of 2016, we've discovered that it actually might be a lot larger than we thought, making this the largest unnamed object in our solar system. Today we're going to talk about 2007 OR10 and discover a little bit more about it. Welcome to What The Math. And first and foremost, uh, this object right here is technically considered to be a dwarf planet. And in terms of size, it is just a little bit larger than Haumea, but possibly a little bit smaller than Pluto and Eris, making this the third largest dwarf planet. But because it has no name, still has no name, it is actually why I kind of wanted to make a video about it, because one day and hopefully by next year, 2017, we will give it a name because... Uh, the person who was responsible for discovering this object mentioned that he will allow people give and send their best suggestions and he will choose the best suggestion and make it an official title. So maybe it will be your suggestion that will actually name this beautiful object and finally give it a title. Now before we continue with this video, let's actually land on this beautiful dwarf planet and check it out from the surface as well. So I'm going to slowly approach this crater right here and we're going to fly through the surface and take a look at it in all of its glory and all of its beauty. So you'll notice that uh, it has very similar colors to uh, Pluto and that's because just like Pluto it has a lot of these really interesting red materials called tholines, which are basically um, methane ices that were exposed to sun's radiation for too long and became red. So this is what uh, is causing this planet to be very red. And today we think that this is possibly one of the reddest, if not the reddest objects in our solar system. So it technically should be a lot more red than this. But basically all of this, all of this red brownie stuff that you see, this is all tholines. Now let's go into Universe Sandbox 2 and play around a little bit more with this object and see what we can do with it, uh, change its size to the newly estimated size and also possibly collide it with our planet Earth. And now that we are in Universe Sandbox 2, let's go and look for 2007 OR10 also unofficially known as Snow White. Now, one of the reasons why it is known as Snow White is because um, it was actually the seventh dwarf planet to be discovered. So it was technically the seventh dwarf. But also apparently um, people thought that it was the whitest object in our solar system. And I can't seem to find it. There it is. Um, and But we now know that it's actually not that white. As a matter of fact, it's possibly the reddest object in our solar system which is almost the opposite of what we thought about it. So Snow White is definitely not a very good title for it. Now, because it's kind of far away from the sun, it's very, very dark here, and it's very difficult for us to kind of see the details um, of this uh, dwarf planet. So we're going to actually go into a new simulation here and edit separately just so you can kind of see what it looks like in Universe Sandbox. So this is uh, 2007 OR10. Now we are now almost uh, absolutely positive that it's possibly a little bit larger than, than uh, it is here. So in this particular game it's six, 645 kilometers in radius but it's very likely to be closer to 770 kilometers in radius. So not a huge amount of change here, but it is a little bit larger, making this the thirdest, uh, not the thirdest, but the third largest uh, dwarf planet out there. So it's um, smaller than Pluto, as you can see, larger than Ceres, and pretty much larger than everything else here, including Sedna, uh, but still a little bit smaller than Ares. So it's uh, third after Ares and Pluto, but it is larger than Makimaki Maki and larger than Haumea. So it is basically the largest unnamed object we currently have. Now, in terms of orbit, uh, it actually takes this particular object about 547 years to orbit around the sun once. It has a very, very elliptical orbit as well. I'm going to try to show it to you by enabling orbits here and zooming out so you can, you can kind of see that it's actually a very um, elliptical orbit. Uh, it comes as close to the sun as 
about 33 astronomical units and it's, uh, its farthest point, its aphelion, is at about 101 astronomical units and interestingly it actually has a resonance with Neptune. So basically um, what this means is that for every three orbits of Neptune, and Neptune is the blue planet right here, here's Neptune. So for every three orbits of Neptune, this particular object does 10 orbits. So every three orbits, this does 10 orbits. And that's because Neptune actually kind of forced it to do this over billions of years. It's forced it into this kind of an interesting uh, resonance uh, with itself. Unfortunately, that's um, actually all we know about it. Uh, the only other thing we know about it is that it actually doesn't seem to have any satellites, which is not good for us because we will not be able to determine its actual mass. So even though we kind of determined that its size is possibly 770 kilometers in radius, or approximately that, plus minus a few kilometers, uh, we're not sure about its mass at all. And chances are we, will not, we won't be really visiting this uh, dwarf planet for quite a while, if, if at all, because it is not uh, super interesting, we don't really know much about it. And on top of that, we don't really have any plans to go this far anytime soon. It's far away from Pluto, it's far away from everything, and it's of course far away from Sedna as well. But I guess what makes this object a little bit interesting is that uh, by next year it will probably have an official name and it's uh, going to be up to the audience, I guess, up to the people to pick the best name because I think Mike Brown, the person who, uh, or one of the people who discovered this object, uh, mentioned that he would like to, because he can't really seem to find the best name for it, he would like to ask people for help in naming this object and he does have a website where you can kind of give him suggestions. I think he will start doing this in 2017. Now there was actually another person who was responsible for co-discovering this object and this is a person by the name of David uh, Rabinowitz and both of them discovered uh, this dwarf planet using Palomar Observatory in the US. Um, anyway, so that's all we know about it. So before we finish this video, let's see what would happen if this particular beautiful red object collided with our planet Earth. Now, this is very unlikely to happen anytime in the future, but it is going to happen in the game. And so what we're going to do is we're going to pretend that something dislodges the object and it decides to approach our planet Earth and possibly even collide with it. I'm going to aim from a little bit farther away just so we can give it a chance of possibly not colliding with Earth, but it's going to move at a velocity of about 10 kilometers per second starting now. So here it comes. And we're going to see what happens when it approaches our planet Earth. I may have to slow down time a little bit just because we want to see this in slow motion as well. So here it comes. It's going to pass by the moon's orbit and it's slowly approaching Earth. Now, it's currently still at about 10 kilometers per second, but its velocity is going to start increasing dramatically as it approaches Earth a little bit closer. And you'll notice that compared to our, our planet Earth, it's actually relatively small as well. It's not a very large object. As a matter of fact, if you've watched the video where I showed you how much water there is on Earth, it is just a little bit lar larger than that. It is just a little bit larger than total amount of um, water from the planet Earth. All right, so here we go. It's coming toward our planet. Its velocity is now almost 11 kilometers per second. And it looks like it's going to be colliding with what looks to be Caribbean or possibly South America. And slow down a little bit more. Here it comes. So this is 2007 OR10, also unofficially known as Snow White, visiting our planet Earth. And ooh, look at that. There's a beautiful shadow approaching. This is what people in... Um, Venezuela and all these other countries right here would probably be witnessing as this object is about to destroy their beautiful countries. Here we go. 14 kilometers per second. Boom. -boom. All right, so that is it. The end of Earth. Or at least the life on Earth as we know it, because very likely a collision of this magnitude would uh, do this. Yep. This is the end. And that's mostly because the object was actually moving so fast. Um, if it was moving a little bit slower, it would not create such a huge collision. Uh, but even the collision of this magnitude would basically create huge, huge, disastrous um, volcano eruptions, uh, earthquakes, tsunamis all over the planet. So most of, most of the North and South America is pretty much completely dead now. 
and the rest of the world, specifically Europe, which is on the other side here, uh, would um, receive the leftover asteroids, but also would very likely, as you can see, lose all of its water because the planet is now at 460 degrees Celsius. That is a very, very hot planet. And it looks like the temperature is still climbing. It stopped at 510, um, 510 uh, degrees Celsius, which is pretty hot. Anyway, so that's what would happen if Snow White, also known as 2007 or 10, collided with our planet Earth. And let's see what happens after a few years when everything cools down. And two and a half years later, water has returned. There is a little bit of green going on here in Europe, but there's a lot of new craters and okay, I don't actually see South America. Let's take a look at it again because I think it may actually be gone. Okay, yeah. There is no more South America as a continent, but it has now become some sort of a um, island nation, I guess. With most of the South, Amer South South America still being intact, but the rest of South America is gone. As is a large chunk of United States and Canada as well. And obviously Mexico. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. Hopefully you learned something from it. And hopefully now you know about 2007 OR10 which I'm going to place in orbit around our planet. As a reminder of destruction it has caused to our beautiful world. Now, next year in 2017, hopefully we'll have a name for it and maybe it will be your decision what the name will be. Especially if it's a really cool mythological creature or uh, some kind of a mythological god or goddess that may actually uh, apply really well to this particular dwarf planet. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Please subscribe if you still haven't, share this video with your friends, and don't forget to like this video if you've enjoyed watching it. Don't forget to visit the Patreon page where you can help this channel grow by supporting it financially. I'll see you in the next video. Game you later. Bye-bye.